This will be part three of comparing the LaCroix Wave Runner 64XI against my 7200. My original plan for part three was to take the Wave Runner outside and I'm going to uh, sniff some data buses with it. But I think before we do that, I had a few people ask me questions about the triggering of the 64XI, especially with the instability. So I thought before we got started, I'd just take a little bit of time and maybe explain a little bit further about what I was doing with the trigger. So what I was looking at in part two was a chirp. And again, you can see the chirp here being displayed. Currently I have the 7200 running again, and they're both set to the same amplitude, same frequency, trigger level is set to the same amplitude. And while you can't see it right now, the 7200 is again rock solid. So you notice here as I adjust down the amplitude, It does seem to affect the stability of the trigger. And again, I'm not sure why that is. We'll just leave it at that. I'm not sure what the problem is, why the amplitude would ever affect the trigger. Um, this is not what I see with the 7200. As I adjust the amplitude up and down, the trigger just seems to be solid. So originally what I was doing is I set it up for width, and I was looking for this gap. This gap only occurs at the beginning of the chirp. Um, so as long as we have the level set in this area here, and, and I'm looking for this type of a gap, the scope should trigger just fine. And that was where I was having the best results. On the 7200, all I'm doing with that is just setting it to a negative edge, and I've enabled the high frequency rejection. And that's essentially what's set up with this scope right now. You can see here it's set to negative edge, high frequency rejection is on, the level is set to 50 millivolts. This is exactly what the 7200 is set to, and it's triggering just fine. So if I set the width, so if I set the width to something around this time here, uh, currently you can see it's about 100 microseconds per division. So if we set it to somewhere in here, say uh, 70 microseconds, even 50 microseconds, this is the only point that the scope should trigger at. If I do width, and I say the time has to be greater than 50 microseconds, it was all set up from before, and you can see now the scope is actually quite stable. Until I change the amplitude. So again, I'm not sure why this is, um, I wouldn't think the amplitude would have any effect on it. And again, on the 7200, it doesn't. So you can see, you're looking at 7200. Here you're looking at 20 millivolts, 50 millivolts, 0.1 volts. You know, it's just very solid. The Wave Runner, it's not the case. You can just see here as I increase the amplitude it starts behaving very erratically if we did want to use the trigger hold off we would want to look for a single cycle you can see here it's basically 10 divisions straight across or about a millisecond so if we go to the trigger setup you notice in width we're not allowed to do the hold off so we slide it to edge keep it at negative high frequency reject, select the hold off. For all these videos I've been trying to keep them under a half an hour so I've done a lot of tests that I never actually captured the video for. Um, in this case here you can see it's been programmed up for 11 milliseconds. This is what I was using before. And that's about our sweet spot right there. You can see it's working pretty good right now. As I change our amplitude it's pretty solid. now quite stable as I change the amplitude of the signal. Now I'm not using hold off on the 7200A and I'm not sure why on the wave runner when I set this to a width it isn't stable. This is one of the tests I had ran before. This is with a Gaussian white noise and you can see here 
the scope is rock solid and this is where I was using the hold off time before and you can see here it hardly moves at all so with the 7200 there is no switch here on the front or a dial for hold off it doesn't exist what you have to do is hit uh, display and you come over here to set up the trigger and you can see here where it says uh, single source with hold off 4 and we can program this up You can see here I can adjust this pretty much wherever I want it. And then here you can see here as I find that sweet spot, it'll lock right in. So that's a pretty good use there of the hold off. Both scopes are reasonably locked. Looking at 200 nanoseconds per division. at 200 nanoseconds per division on 7200 similar anyway for most cases the triggering is fine for both scopes I think the big question I have again is just why the trigger on the wave runner seems to be sensitive to the amplitude again here you can see me changing the amplitude and even with the delay, you can see it happen. And looking at the 7200, it seems very stable. So I don't understand why this wave runner is just has this tendency to be affected by the amplitude. I think that's enough for triggers. Let's go ahead and take the scope outside and we'll run some tests with it. You're looking inside of my motorcycle trailer. This is a 2005 Hayabusa. And on the other side is a 1983 GS 1100. You can see over here on my table, I've got a small tablet on the right and the wave runner hooked up on the left hand side. We're going to attempt to sniff the communications between this tablet in the two different motorcycles. The reason we want to do this demo is the motorcycles are very noisy electrically. Uh, the GS uses a MSD ignition. It puts out quite a bit of noise. So currently there's a cable tied to the GS going up to the tablet. All I'm going to do is select the uh, MSD program. You see here it's waiting for the motorcycle to come online come over here we'll hit the ignition and we can see it downloading the data off of the ignition the yellow trace is going from the tablet down to the ignition the red is the information coming off the ignition back to the tablet let's see if we can go ahead and decode some of this data here we can see the data coming back from the ignition my next question, eh, it seems to work fine. I'd expect it to. The bike isn't running right now. So let's go ahead and start the engine and we'll see if, uh, if this will still decode this correctly.
Okay, after some fiddling around here, you can see I've got a, I'm not using a 10X probe to attach to the bike. I've just got some coax running back into the scope. So you can see, uh, this is a little app I wrote to monitor the data bus. You can see here we're transmitting a 130B000102. Packets always start out with a 13 0 B. And so the start of our packet here 13 OB 3C OB 3C01. See the baud right here is set at uh, 7800 baud. 801. So I was saying the Hayabusa uses kind of an oddball communication protocol. Doesn't seem to have too much of a trouble decoding it. So let's again go ahead and we'll start up the bike. I'm going to switch this over to gauges. And you can see right now it's not communicating because the bike is off. Actually works a little better than the 232. I'm not too surprised that uh, that the Hayabusa is a little cleaner. This actually has a stock ignition. It's got coil over plugs, so it's going to have a lot less EMI than the old GS. So that's it for the demo. One of the things I'd like to mention is when I was testing out in the trailer, that trailer gets hot. It's uh, black. It was a nice hot sunny day that day. This Wave Runner throws out a lot of heat. There's a thermal switch built into the 7242s where if they get too hot, the 7200 will actually shut down. And in the middle of summer here, the office will get hot enough where that 7200 won't run. And that Wave Runner was definitely at hotter temperatures. It didn't really seem to have any trouble. It took quite a while to film that uh, six minutes of video. That scope was probably sitting out in the trailer for about three hours to collect that data. And even in the middle of the day like that, with I don't know what the temperature of that trailer was, but yeah, it was hot. And that Wave Runner had no trouble with that. And I can guarantee you that 7200A would have been shutting down out there. All in all, like I say, I like the Wave Runner. It's a great scope. Um, installing that solid state drive was definitely a huge benefit for it. I haven't seen any issues with it. I've had people tell me they've attempted to put solid state drives in the Wave Runner and have had issues with it. 
that's certainly not been the case with this particular scope I've had the uh, solid state drive in there about a month and I've used the scope pretty much daily it's had no problems whatsoever with booting or any type of file corruption I've been uh, actually quite happy with it so I hope you enjoyed the videos later